Hi everyone, my name is Pierre Charbonneau. I'm a senior IT consultant and the author on Java E support patterns. Today video will be about Java concurrency, especially about a problem called hidden thread deadlock. What we're going to share today is that the GVM, especially even the latest version 1.7, there are some scenarios that GVM is unable to de detect a true deadlock condition. So in order to show you that, we create a simple Java program, and that's what we're going to present you today. So as you can see, we created a simple Java program to simulate our deadlock. For information, the source is available from the article, so you'll be able to compile and run the program by yourself. So what this program does is very straightforward. It creates a new task, basically a task that the thread will execute, which includes shared objects. And then the program create three threads, one thread log detector, right? Basically, a, a, a thread which will be used for logging, monitoring purposes for the deadlock. Two worker thread, worker thread one, worker thread two, and then we execute the thread and we wait for the completion. Okay. Worker thread one will be executing execution path one and worker trade to execution path number two. Okay. The goal is to replicate a deadlock condition between these two threads by having each of them executing a different execution path or if you prefer attempting to acquire locks in different orders. Okay. Now let's have a look at the lock ordering. So we implemented the class name task with a shared object that will be used for the flat locks or synchronize and another lock which is a re-entrant read write lock which will be used for write and read locks okay so the execution path number one is like this first attempt to acquire a read lock then attempt to acquire a flat lock the execution pattern number two is the other way around First attempt to acquire a flat lock, and then attempt to acquire a right lock. So you see we have reverse lock, acqu acquiring attempt, plus we're mixing up the write and read locks as well. Okay, so let's execute the program as is. So it's running. So you can see it's already taking a long time, right? It's not going anywhere. And unfortunately, our thread lock detector is not detecting any deadlock but it's able to detect read lock. If you look at the code, you will see what this thread does, very simple. It's using the thread MX beam to detect if there is any deadlock, right? And then it, it's keeping track also on the read lock count. So we know that program right now is, is not going anywhere. So obviously it's, it's clear now we replicated our deadlock. Unfortunately, JVM was unable to detect it and the read lock count is one so at least we know that there's one thread holding up a read lock okay so it, now let's see this whole thing via thread dump i'm going now to open java visual vm and generate a thread dump so deadlock you would ask, expect gvm to detect that right but no look at this case no deadlock detected right but if you look at our two threads were interesting and you will see they are indeed in the deadlock situation you see these two threads are waiting for each other. Thread number one, you see, it's waiting to acquire a flat lock on this guy, which is acquired by this other guy. Since we know we are already at line 30, obviously the execution path number one, if you go back to the code, we know we acquired this, right? So round out thread is waiting here, meaning we did acquire the read lock, right? But this guy already acquired a flat lock in reverse order, as I explained earlier. But this one is a, is a waiting to acquire a right lock, you see? So what this is telling us is that this thread is waiting to acquire the flat lock, which will never happen because this guy is waiting to acquire a right lock, which will never happen because this guy acquired a read lock earlier on, you see? So these two threads are in deadlock situation. The problem is that you don't see that, right? The thread will only show you the flat lock and also 
the lock on a ball synchronizer associated with the right locks, right? You won't see the read lock because the read lock, the way it's implemented, based on what we uh, we did some research there, and it's basically just keeping track on account. There's no concept of ownership with the read lock implementation, right, for the entrant, meaning that it won't show up here, and it seems to be pre preventing as well the JVM to do proper deadlock detection in this scenario. So this is tricky because. Now, y this one is obvious because, you know, this guy is waiting from this guy, but the real question mark is why is this guy unable to accord a right lock? Now you may think, well, it's probably a bug in this code or something. Well, no, it's, it's the way that GDK implement that. The rule is pretty clear. The right lock cannot be acquired until the treads release either a read or a write lock so in this case we know for sure we acquired a read lock so this guy is the culprit here right so we're in deadlock now let's stop this and let's replace our implementation by write lock okay so we're eliminating the read lock out of variable so we're just dealing now with flat and right locks but keeping the same order reverse order right so let's have a program so program so far it's not going anywhere still so deadlock is replicated but look you see this time good news is that we're able to detect that so our code by leveraging the MX bean or JVM was able to detect two threads in deadlock which is good news and this time Obviously, there's no read lock. As I explained, we just changed that in the code. Now, let's see this from the Visual VM. I'm going to generate a new thread dump. Bingo. You see there? Deadlock is detected this time. You see? Between our two threads with our program right here. Now, let's look at these two. You see, this is the, this is the, the key here. So, what it's telling us is this, is that, again, you see that guy is waiting again, same situation. It's waiting to acquire the flat lock from this guy. And this guy is unable to acquire a rock. You see, same, same situation. What's the difference? Look at, this is the difference. Look at this guy. You see? So this time the JVM did identify that lock, plus the locked unable synchronizer. Now he's showing up with a new guy. You see? which is associated with this guy, you see? So this one, we know exactly why that thread is waiting. So we know this guy cannot acquire a right lock because there is another thread holding up a right lock, you see? Which is our thread. So this deadlock, it's perfectly explained now and perfectly shown by the JVM. But this is the exact same code. The only thing that we did was to replace the read by a right lock. As I mentioned, the read lock will not show up here because there's no concept of ownership. This is the main problem. As you probably said from my article, there was some comments done by a uh, dog on the uh, on the sun, basically on the Oracle side, mentioning that yeah, that there was some concern and about implementing some ownership for the read uh, due to some lock contention. This doesn't seem to be implemented even today. So it seems, from my perspective, it seems to be preventing the JVM, right, to detect deadlock scenarios involving read lock like this. So unfortunately, you're you're really stuck and trying to, um, you know, figure out that uh, by yourself. So, but as I, I mentioned in the article, you have some ways to do that. So if we go back to this, I'm just going to roll back this code. I'm just going out to focus on the recommendation. Going to replicate the problem one more time, this time with a read lock. As you can see, we're back to our original problem. No deadlock detection. Thread dump. You see same, same pattern again. The, again, you see that synchronizer is gone because now we have a read lock implemented here. There's no deadlock detected, obviously. Now, your best hope is what at this point? If you're dealing with this problem today, my recommendation to you is that obviously if you're, if you're managing the code yourself, you can implement some uh, logging around the count of the read lock, right? So basically it means you could have a look, uh, you could have a look at how many threads or uh, 
uh, basically a count on your read log. This could give you some visibility on, uh, on how many threads acquire such log. That would be one thing, but obviously what we did in our case with other problem cases, Oracle Service Bus, is that we had to analyze the call, the stack trace, right? So that's pretty much what you're left to, right? Because, because keep in mind that when you see something like this, unless you're, we're dealing with weird JVM bug, it's telling us there's another thread holding up a read lock. Chances are there's another thread holding up a read lock. So it means you can look at all the threads, and by analyzing the stack trace, you can try to pinpoint in the code what, uh, which thread is doing that. So you will need a mix of stack trace analysis plus code analysis. And then, like in this case, let's say we don't see anything, then what I would do is this, right? Since I see this guy would be potentially in deadlock, I would look at this code, right? Open this code and then see, okay, is it the chance that there is some read lock acquired? And then by looking at code walkthrough, we would be able to see that, yeah, yeah, there it is, right? So by looking at the stack trace and line of code, we'll be able to potentially pinpoint and understand that there is indeed a read lock acquired. That's pretty much what you're left to, okay? Um, so I'm looking forward for any other recommendation from any other individual that may have uh, had experience with this, but at this point, that's pretty much what we're down to. So I hope you appreciated the presentation. So um, that one was very interesting because it's showing us that that very special scenario when we're using read lock uh, is kind of preventing the JVM to uh, detect that very special deadlock scenario. So again, I thank you for watching this video uh, and I hope that you have a good day.